the mustic botnet is cooking up tomatoes. So uh, Ganesh, I hear you got some news on the mustic botnet that's based on tomato firmware. Yes, I do. Um, uh, it's basically, Moustic is another new botnet. It's been around for, I think, uh, about two years. Uh, they're known to target most of the, um, like the flavor of any time this time, like Linux-based, yeah. as well as IoT-based devices. Uh, when they initially came out, they used to target uh, lots of GPON, maybe DDWRT type of uh, exploits, as well as scanners for different, uh, uh, like a web logic. Uh, as well as uh, web browser, some sort of scanners. They used to use, basically, they look for the any available vulnerabilities to recruit into the botnet. That's the backstory of that one. Okay. But the latest one, uh, which is actually found by Palo Alto 42 Network, uh, they found they're targeting, basically, tomato-based, uh, firmware-based routers. You know, basically, tomato firmware is, uh, which is an alternate uh, firmware used by some of the geeks and nerds to basically put on their routers, right? Instead of the, the default one came with uh, some routers. Yeah, that's what I have on mine, so. Okay, <laughs> okay, then uh, this is the perfect story yeah, for you. Yeah. I mean, the way, they, <laughs> the way they're doing is uh, because it's one avenue they found out to be maybe to recruit more bots into the botnet. Okay. So what they're trying to do is, in this case, uh, they're targeting these tomato-based firmware routers, uh, own them by using default passwords in order to brute force them. I guess there are some, um, even though people are using it, they're trying to keep the default passwords. Of course. Yeah. So how are they doing it? They're typically targeting via port 8080 TCP, I mean, uh, which is typical for any HTTP, either it could be 80 or 8080. But I, I guess in this case, they're using 8080 TCP. Uh, what, it, what it does is once it uh, finds the vulnerable devices, it uses the previous exploits also. Like for example, I said WebLogic, right? Right. WebLogic as well as WordPress, uh, also Webuzo scanners. They have all these scanners. On top of that, they have another new one for the tomato scanners. Okay. So it, they're not only using the new one, but they're also using the existing ones to basically grow the botnet. How are they doing it? Uh, for the, I mean, I just put in there, uh, for the WordPress, they're using 80 or 8080 80 TCP. Uh, for WebLogic, I believe uh, the default one is 7001 TCP. What's uh, what's a unique thing about the Moodstick botnet is um, it has uh, multiple lists of C2 servers or domains. Why is it doing? Because I think uh, if one of the domains or servers have taken down, they have redundancies to fall back. For example, there's a first server, it tries to reach out. If somebody has taken it out, it will go to the next one in the list, okay. so on and so forth. So uh, it has that redundancy built in. Yeah. And uh, I guess uh, you might be wondering how the name Mustic came out. When it came out, I think uh, in one of the exploit codes, uh, when they try to decode, this specific uh, word used to pop up. So that's why at that time, the researcher named it as Mustic Botnet. But in this case, uh, we'll be calling it Mustic Targeting Tomato Botnet. Usually the people who have tomato firmware routers, they're pretty savvy and they are not expecting it to be exposed to this kind of a vulnerability. And I have a couple more slides uh, showing some um, short on scans. Uh, in this uh, graphic, basically, I'm showing two queries, uh, looking at the tomato router as well as the USB. If you look at the, the number is not that huge. About 4,500, 4,600 are there on the short on queries. I mean, which is kind of expected. I mean, not many people uh, have tomato routers, right. even yeah. though if people have, maybe most of them are already are in the default passwords. So which is good True. news. Yeah. Which is good news. I mean, uh, th this is also, Palo Alto has the similar queries on their uh, research. Uh, I think my numbers uh, more or less kind of uh, agrees with that. I think they have uh, about 4,700. I, when I looked at it, I got about 4,200 combined. So I think more or less it combines with the number they are seeing it. But the other one is uh, based on our uh, backbone uh, visibility of these uh, specific ports. Uh, I'll try to explain. In the first graph here, uh, I plotted against um, all the ports like 80, 8080, 80, TCP, um, 7041, all those. 
how, how the activity is looking, and afterwards taking out the top port 8080 in the second port, at what time you're seeing it, and finally looking at the 7001 and 2034, uh, I mean 2004 ports. As you can see in all the graphs, uh, the activity seems to be happening. There was a big spike around, uh, I think, uh, January 20th time frame. Okay. Like you, you see the spike here, yeah. the single spike. This is the time actually Palo Alto released their uh, research to the internet. Ah, okay. I think as soon as uh, it's been released, I think somebody does scanning. And after a day or two, actually, there's a renewed interest and a sustained scanning was there for about two days. Hmm. Uh, I mean, uh, when I looked at uh, actually all those uh, scanners or sources like a spot checking, there seems to be mostly some sort of internet scanners looking for these devices. And they're typically, when they're making, when they're performing these scans, they're, they're looking to brute force, like an external logon? Oh, I think in this case, uh, they're just looking to vulnerable devices. Okay. Uh, some are like research-oriented scanners, so, you know, some, we know some certain people like Rapid7. Right. They do scans certain times which ports are open, uh, those kind of certain. I did not see any successful connection, it doesn't okay. mean that not they are not occurred. successful. Right. Maybe they're just looking to get the list. Maybe there might be some payload coming later at the point of the view. Okay. But uh, the blog, the Palo Alto blog, has a very good write-up, and I highly recommend it to read it to understand how this botnet works. I'd like to know how to harden my tomato router too, uh, just to make sure I'm not on this list. <laughs> um, I think uh, yeah, if you change your default password, I think you should. Yeah, be yeah, I disabled access from the WAN. Yeah. Um, um, but I'm assuming yeah. if there's a vulnerability in in some other part of the router that uh, either a patch or something would have to take place. Oh, what's interesting about this particular group is they do tend to try to focus, uh, it seems, on weak uh, or default credentials. Uh, to identify uh, exploitable uh, devices that they can then develop, you know, deploy their botnet onto or, or other devices. Um, a group by the same name um, previously was deploying uh, a ransomware um, focused on QNAP NAS devices, and they were looking uh, at compromising devices basically using that same weak and default credentials as well. And what's interesting is that back in October of 2019, is that one of the victims of that campaign actually hacked back and retrieved all the encryption keys and released a decryptor uh, <laughs> for that campaign at the time. So when I look at this story, um, there's some really interesting questions that arise about the operational security of this particular threat actor group and, quite frankly, the sophistication uh, of this threat actor group, right? I mean, it doesn't seem like they are... Um, at least from the, the stories that I've seen, you know, writing original exploit code, they're really just taking advantage of people who are failing to take those basic actions to protect themselves, you know, resetting default credentials and other just really mundane administrative tasks. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, that gives some more value for their time, you know, because they're using already existing exploits already, and on top of the, the adding the which are the new one that, I mean, there is, in this case, they use tomato. First thing you do when you get into your router at home or any device that has a login password, you want to change the default settings. So you don't want it to be admin admin. You want to go in there right away and change the username if you can and the password if you can.